You said I will never, and The Rock means never see anything like The Rock. Ah, my movie star arch nemesis. As usual, you're only half right. You will never see anything like John Cena. Because for a year now, I have listened to the best trash talk from undoubtedly the best trash talker in the business, the man who defined the era of attitude. Rock, you brought my mom into this situation. But here I am, like I am every single night. Happy to be here with a smile on my face. And here's why. Oh, Rock, you talk trash. You are the best, but you are not the first. You can listen, and when you left, there was this 10-year gap. And in that gap, when anyone wanted to make a name for themselves in this business or rattle the cage a little bit, there was one name, one dude who got thrown into the meat grinder, one guy who got served to the wolves, and it was me. Listen and think about it. How many people have actually talked trash about John Cena? The list is as long and distinguished as the self-proclaimed people strudel or Holy Moses, or Benjamin Franklin, or whatever you're calling your penis. You see, you see, just like you cannot deny the certain moment of electricity that happens when The Rock enters the arena, you cannot look past the pure emotion that happens every time I step into this ring. You don't believe me? I'll sum it up in five words. Let's go, Cena. Cena sucks. Let's go, Cena. Cena sucks. Let's go, Cena. Cena sucks. Words that I have heard for years. An audience divided. Sometimes an audience hostile. And in any other situation in this business, every single superstar, including you, because I've seen the DVD, has turned their back on the WWE Universe. This is what makes it unique. Finally, there's one man with a set of ideals and an unfaultable resolve that simply just does what the t-shirt says. I rise above, Rock. And here's the kicker. I rise above and I win. And man... Man, that's the thing that gets them. Those guys who say, ah, I'm sick of them. They throw their best at me. You, them, everybody. Their best physically. Their best verbally. They drop that ace and say, we got them now. Nope. I rise above and I win. And although there are some people here tonight that hate that, they know what I know. I am going to win at WrestleMania. Like I said, I know they hate it. But they know it as sure as I do. I am going to win at WrestleMania. Just for kicks, allow me to throw some more truth in your trash. Do you realize I've been an active member of the WWE longer than you? And man, you blew up in the Attitude Era. Sold out crowds every night. WWE could do no wrong. And then you've come back as a global superstar. Unbelievable prosperity. I've had some great moments in the WWE. But I've been here when it wasn't so cool to be a WWE superstar. And even in the good times and the bad times, I'm the guy that beats the company drum loud saying, this is where I belong, this is what I do and I'm proud of it, and this is what I love. This is what I love. Man, so many people say that nowadays, it's become a cliche. But after 10 years of doing this every night, when one guy says it, regardless of if they like my character, they know that I mean it. That's why at WrestleMania, I have to win. After WrestleMania, life goes on for The Rock. The Rock will be starring in G.I. Joe this summer. I'm excited too. Summer blockbuster, he plays Roadblock. This role will launch him into a new atmosphere of superstardom never before seen. After WrestleMania, well, my office doesn't change. After WrestleMania, Rock, this is still my life. The past year, we've said a lot of stuff to each other, and I feel real comfortable saying this to your face. I will be damned if you come in a visitor as good as you think you are and take my life from me i'm just getting started i risk my health every single night you think anybody is going to remember that effort nobody remembers second place that's why i can't lose they know i can't lose that's why i have to win they know i have to win that's why they know i have to win this match more than anything in my entire life The Rock knows how important this match is to you, John. It's just as important to The Rock. But you said something.
You talked about what the people know. The people. Here's what they, here's the first thing they know. They know that The Rock ain't no damn business. This house, this office that is your office, this house, this house, your house, The Rock helped build. Let The Rock tell you what they know. They know that you've never before, you've never before had an opponent that you couldn't overcome until The Rock. They know that to me it's more than just, it's more than just the biggest match of all time. It's more than just you and The Rock making history. They know that The Rock, the people's champion, has come back after all these years to beat you. That's what drives me. Never before has a man been able to say he's walked into WrestleMania and beat Hulk Hogan, beat Stone Cold Steve Austin, and beat John Cena. On a professional level, The Rock needs to beat you to become the greatest WWE superstar of all time. On a personal level, I just don't like you. And because of that, John, in six days, The Rock will tell you to your face, in six days, not only is The Rock gonna beat you, but in six days, The Rock is gonna give you the kicking of a lifetime. You know it, The Rock knows it, and you can bet your ass that they know it too. Fine speech. And I'm glad you think that way. Actually, this really fits right here. It doesn't matter what you think. I'm gonna put this in terms that you understand. I have seen this movie a thousand times and I know how it ends. I have made a living off of being the guy you can't see. But on April 1st at WrestleMania, oh, you will see me. You will see me plain as day, Jack. I'll be the guy with my hand raised high standing over your carcass. And the headline reads what I predicted. John Cena whips the rocks at WrestleMania. And now, more Pro Wrestling Weekly with your host, Ferran Derry. Sit down, shut up, and listen up. Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Rock and Cena knocking it out of the park yeah. with a great promo and so many dynamics to it. And, and you were just saying before we got back on air here, why is it taking WWE this long for Rock to pretty much be on this quest to be the greatest superstar ever? I mean, if he wins tomorrow night at WrestleMania, at WrestleMania he will have beaten over the years Hogan, Austin, and Cena. Yeah. Consider, I mean, three of the greatest of their respective generations or eras. You know, you want to talk about the Hulkamania era from the 80s or the rock and wrestling era. Yep. Beating Austin from the Attitude era and now beating Cena from, I don't even know what you want to call this the era. The PG reality era. Yeah, the PG reality the era. The Twitter era. I guess. I mean, it, all that's missing, although I guess it's a little late now, is the ruthless aggression era. But I guess we can't bring Benoit back from... Uh, yeah. Oh, wait, shame on me for even mentioning him, I guess. <laughs> I get myself into so much trouble on this show. It's it amazing. Happens. What can I do? <laughs> you know what I can do? I can go to the phones. I like it. Get the phones to help me out here. Let's get to Manny, who's been waiting patiently. Manny, welcome to Pro Wrestling Weekly. Yo, uh, what's up? Pumps. I am pumps for WrestleMania. Uh, I'm having a big party in my mom's basement. Uh, I'm inviting all my buddies. We're, we're really pumped for it. Uh, how about you guys? I, I mean, I'm with you, man. I, I look at last year's WrestleMania card compared to this year, and there is honestly, other than the fact that they're throwing Maria Menounos in our face for another WrestleMania, there's not a bad match on the card. Although, I was going to say, with, with her rib injury while, uh, I guess, training for Dancing with the Stars, it's hard to say what capacity she'll be in, if any, or how much they'll let her do in the ring. Because right. broken ribs are no joke. I, I no. I still feel mine every once in a while from uh, the year and a half ago that I'd broken mine. Uh, speaking of which, uh, she's facing Eve Torres in this match. And one of my favorite memories from going to Raw in Philly a couple weeks ago were the little kids that were chanting Hoski. I mean, there were little seven, eight-year-old kids chanting this at Eve Torres. I'm sitting there just thinking, Hosky. that's good parenting. <laughs> that is brilliant parenting. <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling that Triple H is going to go down. For the first, or I mean, uh, the other, the uh, you think Taker's going 19 and one? Yeah, I think he's gonna lose. I think he's gonna lose on a uh, finally going down for the uh, first loss. 
I, first WrestleMania loss. I think he's going to go to 20. I think the loss is going to come next year. For whatever reason, I feel like there's going to be one more match out of him. I don't feel like this is it. I don't know. All I mean, right, at well, that point, he'll be 47? Yeah. No, 40. He'll be 48 at 48, that time. yeah. Well, Jamie Moyer just made the Rockies at 49, so. <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't right. know. Throwing a baseball and taking slams in a ring are two totally different things. There's that. Well, Ric Flair's what, 78? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Sixty-three. Oh, th- thanks for the call, man. Take you care, Manny. Thanks for calling, man. Wow. Uh, yeah. No, he's uh, sixty-three. I think Flair is. Wow. And he'll still, 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 they'll still toss around in the ring. A little bit. A little bit. I know. I couldn't do it, and I'm half his age. <laughs> right. A little less than. <laughs> Crazy, crazy stuff. Oh my gosh. All right, let's let's take a look at the rundown. We're at a good point here. Let's let's go match by match here. We've got well, we've got looks like nine matches now on the card with the latest edition, a triple threat match for the tag team championships. Epico and Primo. Well, where have they been? Well, last year's uh dark match ended up being the main event at WrestleMania, so maybe we'll see one of these guys main eventing next year. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Hard to say, yeah. Justin Gabriel in the main event. Yeah, you know. The South African superstar. Bring it. (laughs) Uh, But, yeah, no. Justin Gabriel and Tyson Kidd and the Uso brothers. I think, again. I've been on Gabriel and Kidd. I feel like that could be an awesome tag team. They got to get time to to develop, though. Yeah. Kind of like, uh, oh, gosh, uh, Paul London and uh, uh, Brian Kendrick from a few years ago. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, they held the belts for, you know, over a year, Mm -hmm. which is something that hadn't been done in ages. So, I don't know. I think uh, Epico Primo, they're going to retain there. You've got the 12-man tag match that nobody really cares about. For the, oh, the, the Usos are in that. It's two. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, the triple threat, the Usos, Justin Gabriel, Tyson Kidd, and uh, Epico and Primo. That, that's for the tag titles. You've got Team Johnny, of course, John Laurinaitis uh, against Team Teddy. Teddy Long, the winning team. That general manager is going to run both Raw and SmackDown. For Team Johnny, you got David Otunga, Mark Henry, Dolph Ziggler, well, it was Christian, but with uh, with him getting uh, pretty much destroyed. <laughs> yeah. I wonder, I guess he just wasn't ready to quite come back from injury yet. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. You could With 12 guys in there, you could have used him in a limited capacity. Yeah. I don't know. You got Jack Swagger and the Miz in there. just a way to get McIntyre there. over. Perhaps. I yeah, because McIntyre's something. taken over. McIntyre's going to be yeah, in McIntyre that match. Yeah, McIntyre has that spot. And then Team Teddy, you've got Santino Morella. Our truth the great Kali, Kofi Kingston, Zack Ryder, and Booker T. Just well, looking at the names alone, I think... It you sure know, feels like Team Johnny's got the better team, that's for sure. Absolutely, and that's why I've got them as my pick. Yeah. Plus, yeah. you know Vince loves him some Johnny Ace. I know, and I don't understand it, but... So poor, poor poor Teddy, but uh, I'm sure he'll be around in some capacity. I- I'm waiting He'd for... He'd be a great manager. He was a manager for I mean, Yeah, he started out with, uh, how about Rodney Mack for a name from the past? Rodney, uh, well, if you want to go real far to the pa- past, how about Doom? Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> the tag team from WCW. But we're looking back at like 91, 92, yeah. somewhere in that era. Jeez. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Kelly Kelly and Maria Menounos, of course, subject to change against Beth Phoenix and Eve. <laughs> Whenever a celebrity's involved, please, no yawning. That's not right. <laughs> At least get popcorn if you're going to... No. Well, no, that, that'll that certainly be the, you know, refill a couple of slices of pizza match. A couple of slices of pizza, get a, get a brewski for your broski, that right, sort of exactly. deal. Right, exactly. Did I really just say that? All right, Menounos and Kelly, moving Did on. I agree? Yes, Randy Orton and Kane in a match. They're going to... They're. I think they're going to show that you know they des- they both deserve a little bit better than this, and they're gonna they're gonna put on a pretty good match. I think Orton's going to win that one. I-, I see Orton winning that one too. And like I said, I-, I just feel bad because there was no time for this particular rivalry to develop. I, I feel it was like just I- thrown out there. Yeah, like hey, John Cena or you know Randy Orton and Kane all of a sudden hate each other now. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Yeah, good good job. You get uh yeah, this was John pro- Cena's sloppy seconds match. That's pretty much right. what this is. This was probably the Barrett uh injury ended up throwing Kane into this. Yeah. Spot. Yeah, I think this would have been Randy Orton and Wade Barrett had it not been for the injury. So yeah. You kind of got to, you know, you got to do with what you got, and that's kind of what happened here. Cody Rhodes in the Big Show Intercontinental Title. I'm, I'm looking forward to this match for some reason. Well, it's because everybody's looking for Big Show to get his. Uh, Cody Rhodes has done a great job as being that that pesky little like gnat buzzing around yeah. your ear, 
and I, I like it. I mean, I don't think the title's going to change hands. I think Rhodes is going to retain, and maybe he can follow through in his promise to bring some prestige to the Intercontinental title. I'm liking the old school white strap. Yep. Yeah. Always have. Yeah, I'm in on Cody Rhodes with that one, too. All right, and then we've got the, the big four. The big what? I'm sorry. No, no, that that's a different show. Uh, Daniel Bryan and Sheamus, World Heavyweight Championship. I've got Bryan retaining there because Sheamus, I don't know, they, they haven't really done much with him. And I think he's going to be added to the list of Rumble winners who have lost at their title opportunity. Because that, that seemed to be a rapidly growing list in recent years. See, I, I'm going the opposite way with this one. I'm going to go Sheamus because I feel like... If you just look at the main event roster breakdown over on SmackDown, Sheamus and Randy Orton are the only good guys they have. It's going to be easier for them to push more of the heels than it is the good guys. You know, again, Sheamus and Orton, you look at the heel of bad guys, you got Henry, Brian. I mean, there's a ton of them. So it'll be easier. You know, you could set up the rematch at Extreme Rules, your quick rematch, and then it can move on to something different for both of them. Yeah, I, I think that you know chasing the belt at this point is probably better for Sheamus as opposed to having it and okay. Brian trying to get it back. But I like what they're doing with him and AJ, kind of like a modern-day Randy Savage Elizabeth. A little bit, yeah. I'm digging it, and I, it kind I'm of works I'm in on anything that involves AJ. I'm a big fan. <laughs> I bet you are. <laughs> but for totally different reasons, oh, I absolutely. think. All right. CM Punk and Chris Jericho, WWE. Ch- <laughs> can't go wrong there. Punk and Jericho, WWE Championship. For the same reason, I think Jericho wins the belt here. Punk chases him. And, of course, Extreme Rules coming up in a few weeks in Punk's hometown of Chicago. So I think that's where you get the family involved. Okay. So that's why I think Jericho wins the belt here. Plus, that way you get the one big title change. See, my big title change is the world heavyweight. I, I think yeah, he so retains. we're going different routes and I on think, that. I think maybe you could see something, you know, where you talk about maybe the family getting involved, maybe the family going the other way on CM Punk. That would be rather dynamic. Yeah. We'll go with, yeah, we'll go with dynamic for work because I couldn't think of anything <laughs> better. So I get for running on two hours of sleep. <laughs> All right. Taker and Triple H, Hell in a Cell, Shawn Michaels is the special guest referee. I think we've pretty much already gone over it already. I think Taker's going 20-0 and 0 at WrestleMania. Yeah, I mean, I, the streak, I, I agree. Once it's broken, you can't put Unbreak it back together. It. Yeah. You know, if, like the old internet meme, once something is seen cannot be unseen. Exactly. Same type of deal here. And, and I mean, look at Goldberg. Once he lost the belt and everything to Kevin Nash, it, it was just a downward spiral from there. So that you, you can't, again, you can't. Once you break it, you can't get rid of it, and I don't think, I, I would hope that Triple H's ego won't get in the way of what's best for business. I know it has a lot in the past, yeah. but even he's got to be smart, because now, now he's wearing the suit and tie. He's got to realize that his decisions affect more than just himself. They affect the bottom line, the bottom dollar, exactly. everybody's paychecks. So I would hope that he doesn't put himself above all that and, you know risk long-term damage for a short-term bragging right. We would hope. We would hope. That's what I'm doing here. And then, of course, The Rock and Cena, once in a lifetime, until next year, possibly. (laughs) I got Cena in this one. (sighs) My gut is telling me Cena, but my heart is telling me Rock, because I was such a huge Rock fan. But... (sighs) Are you kidding? I was at WrestleMania 15... The, at the then first Union Center, with a little, you know, the little foam belt over my shoulder, dressed <laughs> as the Rock, you know, the fancy, you know, five hundred dollars shirt. Although in my case, it was probably more like five dollars. Right. You know, the the, the, the track Mills pants special. with the two, yeah, the Foreman Mills special, the track pants with the you know the two stripes down the side, the sunglasses, the eyebrow, the whole bit. I didn't have the Chia Pet hair back then because I don't think I could grow it that far. And I think he finally trimmed it out. I had the sideburns going on my senior year of high school. Well done. Yeah, I, I had everything going. I, I was as close to the people's <laughs> champ as you could get back then. I was more like the people's chump. Right. And that has carried itself over 13 <laughs> years later. Not much has changed. I, I unfortunately, I just, I, I have, I have seen it. it. If you watch his matches, it really is the carbon copy of watching Hulk Hogan beat up the entire time. Seven moves to doom, match over. No sells everything. Are you giving Cena the, the, the benefit? Of, I thought it was five moves of Doom, but oh, apparently okay. he's expanded his repertoire to seven. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm going to go seven. There you go. Benefit it, of the Every doubt. once in a while, he throws the STF in there. So There you go. 
Wow, crazy stuff. All right, let's uh, let's take a quick look at the local scene. We'll get to Ed here on the lines. Bill, yeah. Let's go ahead and get back to the phones. Let's get to uh, let's get to Ed in the Northeast. <laughs> Ed, welcome to Pro Wrestling Weekly. Good afternoon. We have um, a show. We have a show coming up in in New Jersey on May 11th at 7:30 at. Uh, I can't Oh, no problem. You know what? We'll get back. Get back. It's coming up in May, so you got yeah, ample yeah, time. Get back to us next market. week on that, and, uh, and we can, and you we know, we can PWS certainly. We have coming up May 4th. Refuse to lose in Rahway, New Jersey. Rahway, New Jersey. A little bit of a hike north, but uh, certainly okay. a good one. May 4th. We, a little bit of time away, so we can certainly get some more details on that yeah, as well. Couple of uh, notable not names. Bad, yeah, yeah not, not too, not too shabby at all. All right. Unfortunately, Happy I'm up Easter. against. Oh, thank you. Yes. Ha- well, Easter coming up a day, a week, uh, a week and a day away. Uh, so I know. We'll have more, more information in the coming weeks. And more uh, plugs. <laughs> Absolutely. Gr- appreciate the, the look at the local scene as always. Thanks so much for the call, Ed. We'll uh, take care of a little bit of business, our second little bit, and come back with uh, probably one of my shortest segments ever. <laughs> <laughs> After we take care of a little bit of business, we'll get to Ron and the infamous Rat Boy on the other side. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com.